<clears throat> Alright ladies and gentlemen, I'm here on the show, and I'm here tonight to recap uh, Smackdown. So, I thought it was a pretty good show tonight. Um, Cody Rhodes, the first uh, challenger, uh, was decided in the opener. And uh, AJ Styles and L. A. Not yeah. Um, what's like what was gonna happen following last week with the bloodline with Tomatonga, Sola Sokola, which is he the new tribal chief? Cause he's really taking taking orders, taking the uh, taking the orders when nothing's really in his control. And Paul Heyman trying to be like, oh, it's the tribal chief that makes uh, the decisions. Now, it looks like Sol Sokola's, uh, I guess, the no tribal chief. So, that was interesting with that. Uh, the women's title match in the main event. Which will set up probably for a triple threat match at Backlash. Probably. Uh, so no tag titles. We got uh, no set of tag titles on Monday. No set of tag titles uh, tonight. Well, let's just get into it here. So, we start off the show with AJ Styles versus L. A. Knight. Yeah. And AJ Styles beats LA Knight in the number one contenders match to face uh, Cody Rhodes at Backlash. And they'll have a contract signing uh, next week on uh, SmackDown. I like the Mania match more, but I like how it made sense that they, that they adapted in this match. I mean, and I'm people like, oh, uh, I mean, oh, we don't like 50-50 booking. I mean, I mean, I know we lost, but I mean, it's because the heel obviously cheats. Cheats. Great, like hits him in the eye, hits the phenomenal form, chase the win. I mean, the main match was better. The crowd were distracted, which threw the crowd, which threw the crowd appeal off. The lights were flashing in a lot of people's faces, but for those paying attention, the main match was pretty good. And LA Knight's all not back to losing. He'll be okay. I mean, LA or uh, AJ Styles had to get his win back. But I thought a pretty good match. And yeah, it's 50-50 bucking. I get it. But would you rather LA Knight lose the championship, to, lose in the lose a championship match to Cody? And you don't want a face versus face. Like that wouldn't make sense. You can't just have a baby face versus versus a baby face. Their main match was better, but that's not saying this was bad. This was a pretty good match, too. Their main match was nice, and this one was good as well. Those two were good in the ring. They have good chemistry as AJ Styles and L. A. Not yeah. So, good match to open the show. And next, uh, we have Paul Triple H Levesque. The CCO. The Chief Content Officer. Out there with SmackDown GM uh, Nick Aldis presenting a uh, new WB tag team titles. Um, here they are. Again, that mother is set to serve 22 years in prison. She must serve 85% of that sentence. So, I, I like them. I think they're better than raw titles uh, to me. When I saw these titles, I instantly thought of how they are a take on the old school, like old school titles. They look like the 2002 version of the tag titles. In my opinion, way not, those are nicer than the Raw tag titles. I'm, I'm just glad the previous ones are retired for real because I'm just, I was tired of seeing the red and blue belts. They're just, eh. I mean, the, the Raw belts I think are better than the new ones than the old ones. But they're okay, but I think these are way better. I'm just happy that both titles are different from each other. And they went, and they went with the style that people like. And hopefully that means once we get the draft uh, on Monday and then Friday of next week, the Raw and SmackDown tag divisions get a good focus. The new de design designs seem great. And also there's a QR code um, when Paul Triple H Levesque. And I think this is uh, what showed up. 
Yeah, um, it's not really a seeker's point, it's Uncle Howdy. But he's probably the best belts anyway some that I've mentioned that WWE's come out with. And out of all the belts they've, um, out of all the belts that they've, the new belts they've shown on television, this is probably the best one. But I'd like to see Cody Rhodes have the winged eagle belt after the draft. Will they do it? Don't know. There's a chance, but I feel like if he was going to mention changing the title, then he he's going to change it. And then we have the number one contender decided for SmackDown for the SmackDown Tag Titles of the Street Profits. I'm looking back there in my notes. Um, versus New Catch Republic versus uh, ALP and versus Legado Del Fantasma. How do you say their name? Whatever their damn name is. A uh, pretty good match. A lot of good near falls. A lot of good spots. Ultimately, the Street Profits win. So, makes makes sense. So, Street Profits versus Waller and Theory. Don't know when. I don't know if it's said when, but they're the number one contenders. And the next, so Sokola and Paul Heyman were backstage. They're looking for Kevin Owens. Why? Can't tell you why. Um, yeah, they, when they head to the ring for an uh, in-ring segment, but one thing I noticed was the Roman Reigns babyface turn is already in full effect because they were chant, they were chanting, "We want Roman, we want Roman." They're in Sokoa, they're in the solo Sokoa segment, and feels like Roman Reigns is already babyface. They're chanting, "We want Roman." I felt like the moment he lost, he become a babyface at WrestleMania. Yeah, Roman's a full-on baby face. He's gonna come back as a baby face. I think he'll be good. It's, it's I know people will be like, oh, we don't want good guy Roman. This isn't um, the big dog. He'll, he'll be still be the tribal chief, but he'll be a baby face. He, he won't be a, the big dog. But Solo Sokoa... He's talked more the last two weeks than he's ever talked so far as through the, uh, up in the main roster. I mean, I think the reason people probably aren't as invested before with Sol Sokoa is because after John Cena put him over at Crown Jewel, he went like 0-32 including live events. The booking that he be, did made him go from an unstoppable force to a jobber. Really, but the last two weeks, his character development has been brilliant uh, to me. He's on fire right now. He's been money. He's been showing off some uh, Ayora. What 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 do the people call on social media now? Ayora. But he's been cooking these last two weeks. He doesn't even have to be there. That's the best part. I also think the addition of Tama Tonga maybe as the enforcer, and so is the main guy was a great twist. And they were booing Sol Sokoa pretty loud. He couldn't get, he couldn't even get a damn word in. But I'll, but that pop when they're about to beat the hell out of Paul Heyman, Roman's music hits will be legendary. But I'm loving this storyline already. Bloodline will do energy. I'm stunned they showed blood blood on SmackDown. Triple H, Triple H has certainly brought a new era, new era, and edge to me, and I love it. But Bloodline with the new energy, Tomatonga, being absolutely ruthless out there, being shit out of people. Can't wait for, can't wait for Roman to come back, and we can get maybe at the, uh, we can get, as I've mentioned, like the OG Bloodline versus the new Bloodline, say at War Games or something. When will Roman eventually return? Don't know. He'll probably be out for a few months. Take some time off, obviously. I think he's in Hollywood or something right now, so he'll probably be back in a few months. Yeah, Tom Tonga then attacks Kevin Owens. Kevin Owens, never know, you know he's never going to get up in a fight, but gets the shit out of him. Blood. And then after that, 
we see Nick Aldis dragging Paul Heyman uh, out there and shows two rent or two cars, like just insane. Tom and Tonga tried to put uh, crash into Kevin Owens' rental car. He tried to end KO. This is some ruthless aggression, aggression era shit right here. I switch. I, I look down. And also, I look up and I see. And I thought a freaking murder occur, occurred. But real wrestling is back. Rental car. He really tried to kill him. Tama Tonga is being booked like an absolute maniac. I mean, I love it. Uh, next, Carlo, Carlito, I'm about to say Carlos. How, Pendale face has the family. Uh, Carlito versus Santos Escobar. Santos Escobar wins. Solid match. Um, women's title, Bailey versus Naomi, and Naomi wins via DQ. So, uh, Tiffany Stratton takes out Bailey and Naomi putting an end to the title match. It looks like we're going to get a triple threat, a backlash, most likely. That moon that saw is just such a bee, but... I mean, can they choose... Here's my complaint. Can they choose a damn theme song? Like, choose one. I mean, I don't like the Death Rebel one. I like her NXT theme way better. But just choose one. You can't go back and forth every week on the theme song. Like, I swear, Death Rebel is just... So bad. And Bailey's theme with Death Rebel, ugh. I don't really care. Naomi's is, eh. The lyrics sound like they were written by a freaking kid. Naomi's actually does just hurts my ears. They ruined her great theme she had. Just bring back the glow. What, what, what was her original theme? The glow? And... Death Rebel needs to freaking pick up the phone. Death Rebel's been released by WWE. Like, they really changed her theme again. Like, can they make up their minds? Like, it's just stupid. But that's my only complaint. Yeah, it looks like we're in a triple threat. And this match ended in DQ. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. Um, an 8 out of 10 SmackDown night. Pretty good show. Honestly, I enjoyed it. What the fuck is happening here with my phone? Um, but yeah. That's really it. I like the championship match presentation. Like they do for championship matches now. Like the 8K cameras or whatever it is. Those 8K cameras are beautiful. And treat it like a big deal. Mike Brown doesn't get enough credit. He's pretty good too. But yeah, it's really hard to say here. So, um, yeah, until next time I'm out. Peace.